Hey, this is Steve from eithercareer.wordpress.com. I'm an amateur screenwriter, so take everything I'm about to say as pure opinion and with a grain of salt. Now, with that out of the way, in today's video, I wanted to talk a little bit about screenwriting theory and what that term means uh, and how you should approach uh, various books and people's opinions on the, the best way to write a screenplay. In the scientific community, uh, scientists will propose a theory which, to the best of their knowledge, is the way they believe something works. Uh, it's different from a hypothesis. An hypothesis, oh yeah, an I, a, a hypothesis is an unproven or an untested idea. And a theory is a tested idea, but it's not necessarily been proven 100%. So um, that's why you'll use hear the term the theory of relativity as opposed to the fact of relativity. The fact is something that's been proven without a doubt. It's, it's fact. Uh, and when you look at screenwriting, you're going to see a lot of people who have theories about the best way to write a screenplay or structure a screenplay. Uh, you know, whether that person's name is Sid Field or Blake Snyder, the fact is, is they are theories on ways to write a screenplay. They're not fact. Um, a lot of writers will disagree with methods, they don't like methods, or they'll have various things, but, but bottom line is what these authors and books are pushing are theories on the best way to structure and write a screenplay. Now, that's not to say that they're wrong. Uh, John August, who I've just recently gotten into his blog, uh, for those who don't know, John August has written, has written and produced, the more important thing, uh, a bunch of screenplays. Uh, the Corpse Bride, uh, Big Fish, uh, Charlie and Chocolate Factory, and, and a bunch of other screenplays uh, are produced. And, and John says, be wary of uh, how-to books and theories from writers who don't have a lot of produced credits. Uh, he views them as failed writers and failed producers and not necessarily screenwriters. If they were screenwriters, they wouldn't need to write books on how to do it because they would be too busy writing screenplays. Uh, you could counter that and say, well, if you're so busy writing screenplays, how do you write a blog, you know, blah, blah, blah. It's, it's not necessarily apples to apples, but I think you get what I'm saying. Um, but, you know, his main point is just be wary of people who write books, you know, and, and, and propose theories on the right way to write screenplays, especially if they don't have a lot of produced credits. Now, in total, here are all the books on screenwriting that I own. Why do I own all these books? Because I don't have any classes that I can take to learn. i got to teach myself. And right now, the only ways I can do that is uh, read scripts, uh, thankfully from sites like Script Shadow that let me know which ones are good ones, which ones are bad ones, uh, read books, and um, uh, take, you know, participate in message board. So that's how I, how I learn theories. Now... <clears throat> Of all these books, a lot of them talk about technique and structure and character and what things you shouldn't do and how you can get around beating the Hollywood screenwriter. There are really three that I would advise uh, in regarding what two theories you should first introduce yourself to if you're a new writer. And um, that's Sid Field's two books, Screenplay and The Screenwriter's Workbook. They kind of go hand in hand. If you're only going to get one, I'd suggest the Screenwriter's Workbook because not only does it introduce you to how to uh, take apart and dissect screenplays from a critical standpoint, it will also walk you through what is in essence his 10-week course to write uh, a script. And uh, Blake Snyder Save the Cat. Very similar thing. It's going to introduce you to his method to critically dissect screenplays and introduce you to his theory on how to write a successful screenplay. Now, the two theories these writers put forth uh, are a little different. Now, Sid kind of was the granddaddy of all of this stuff. Uh, I still think from a introductory standpoint, his is the most approachable. Uh, he writes in a manner that is very easy to understand and it's going to give you a big picture view of screenplays in general. Now, his theory, some people like, some people hate. Uh, Sid has the traditional three-act screenplay uh, with Act 1, Act 2A, Act 2B, and Act 3, with a midpoint in the middle and a plot point at the end of Act 1 and Act 2B. Uh, and you follow all those little pieces and you dissect it into those four groups and you can write a script uh, and theoretically be successful. Blake Snyder also has a three-act screenplay, but it's uh, a little different. 
he has 12 main beats that need to be accomplished between Act 1 and Act 3. And according to him, theoretically, if you follow all 12 of those theories, you're going to have a successful screenplay. Now, just because you're able to follow a theory does not mean you're going to have a good screenplay. Whether you're a good writer or not, ultimately it boils down to the story. Uh, I think from a technical level, my writing reads professionally, but from a story level, not quite there yet. Uh, I can, you know, I can write five pages that read like a professional, but those five pages can be boring, if that makes any sense. Um, mastering characters, mastering tension, mastering a story uh, takes a lot more work than mastering how to write like a professional. And that's something I've learned over the last couple months uh, and something I'm going to work on for the next year. So even if you hit all of the points that these two particular screenwriting theories bring up, it doesn't mean you're going to have necessarily a great or even a good script. You'll have a technically sound script, perhaps, um, but you may not have enough to separate it from the monotony of everybody else's garbage out there. And um, there's a couple ways to do that. One, interesting characters. Two, uh, very interesting story. Three, uh, strong tension between your characters and events. You know, these are the things that separate the vast majority of screenwriters who aren't bad writers. They're just not great writers. And the professionals, you know, the great writers. So, <clears throat> when looking at screenwriting theory, what you need to concentrate on is experiment and educate yourself on as many as possible. I have aspects from Save the Cat I really like. It's like, for example, Sid Field, or not Sid Field, Blake Snyder has a moment called Everything is Lost that comes about halfway through Act 3. It's a very powerful moment, and um, it is very useful for, uh, for putting in that little extra tension towards the act. And actually, you can even back up a little bit and take his 12 points, or 12 beats, and map those to Joseph Campbell's 12 beats with a Hero of a Thousand Faces story, which was... You could even see the precursor to the Save the Cat method, but uh, I'll let you explore that on your own time. Um, so there's a lot of useful things on here, but at the same point, there's some stuff that pigeonholes you into a very specific set rhythm that may not work creatively with the type of story you're trying to tell. On the flip side, Sid Field's method is a little more open. You've got some major milestones to hit, but a lot more flexibility in how to connect those milestones together. At the same time, that may be too ambiguous for a writer while they're first starting out and trying to hone their skills. So this may be too open. This may be not. This might not be open enough. And while you're educating yourself and honing your craft and working on things, that's the type of stuff you need to really dissect critically and figure out. Well, you know, every story is a beginning, middle, and end. It doesn't need to be told in that order. But those three points exist. There's a page one and a last page. Outside of how you how, those facts. Everything else in between, it's up in the air. There's no definitive or factual or 100% accurate way to tell your story on a script or on the screen page play or the screenplay page. You know, it's really up for interpretation. So when you're going through and you're looking at screenwriting theories and you're exploring different methods that authors put together, what you need to do is figure out what points and what bits of each of these theories can work to help you as a person. Everybody thinks differently. Everybody will go about putting together their story differently. And while you may not have to swear by the methods in these books, odds are they're going to put you through a series of thinking exercises that are going to let you find out something you didn't consider before. Just like taking a class on history. You can read a million books on world history and American history. But until you sit with a professor or an intellectual and really dissect and are able to synthesize that stuff in ideas, concepts, then you become an expert on that kind of stuff. And that's when you really start to, to get to know history. And it's the same thing with screenwriting. Educate yourself on as much as possible. Read scripts, watch movies, uh, read books on screenwriting, and read message boards on screenwriting, and really take all of that information on screenwriting theory. And then boil it down into stuff that works for you. Uh, methods that work for you, Piece, bits and pieces from everything that you can put together that works for you. And the more you write scripts, whether they're successful or not, the better you're going to get at that. You know, I write, I try to write three screenplays a year. Uh, so far, I've done that every year but one. I only have two that I consider good. But each of those scripts, I've learned something, whether it was my first script or my last script that I wrote. And as I go along, I'm continuing to educate myself on as much stuff as possible. And it's, it's always useful. I always come away 
uh, with a little something that I can use that I can bring into my own my own writing. And uh, you know whether it's stuff I picked up in Sid Field or stuff I picked up from Blake Snyder or stuff I've picked up not to do from Martin Flynn uh, or other things that I've figured out to do from Jennifer uh, Lurch. You know, in any of these books I have, there's always a little something I'm going to take away. So take that for what you will. Uh, hopefully this helped clear up some stuff when I use the term screenwriting theory and some opinions on it. But uh, if not, well, you know, what are you going to do? All right. Well, until next time, this is Steve from myothercareer.wordpress.com. Keep writing.